Hey, it's number one best-selling author and keynote speaker, Eric Qualman, but most of you know me as Equal Man. I hope all of you are staying safe, smart, and sane during these challenging times. And we thought these tips today would really help you out. I know a lot of you are watching the Michael Jordan documentary series on ESPN, The Last Dance. And so before we get into the seven super tips from Michael Jordan, I have two personal Michael Jordan stories. The first came when I was in college. My teammate and I were in the equipment room the Chicago Bulls were in town for an exhibition game, and we hated the Bulls. We were Detroit Pistons fans. We were Michigan State basketball players, and we loved the Detroit Pistons. And so we're bagging on Jordan, don't like him at all, saying all these bad things about Michael Jordan. We do not know that he can hear us. We cannot see him, but he can hear us. And all of a sudden, he leans his head in that open window of the equipment room with this smile on his face, and he says, hey, fellas, are the adult balls, the big balls, on the main court? Because all I see in there is the little college balls that you play with. And then he started laughing, and away he went. Michael Jordan story number two. My teammate, my former college teammate, actually signed a 45-day contract with the Chicago Bulls. Actually, he went on to win a ring for that 45 days. He won a championship ring. Uh, for that 45 days, but he was in practice against Michael Jordan. So he's guarding Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan paused and goes, hey, man, did you go out drinking last night? And he goes, yeah, I did. I went out with Steve Kerr. We went out and got a couple beers. He goes, yeah, I know. I can smell it on your breath. Your breath smells horrible. Uh, so my former teammate starts laughing and goes, yeah, yeah, I know. And he goes, no, no, no. Your breath stinks. He goes, yeah, I know. And he goes, no, no, no. If you're going to guard me in practice, you need to go get some gum. And so he made my teammate go out and get gum at the CVS across the street and come back in. And that's really Michael saying, like, you're in. If I'm going to give you a hard time, then I respect you. Here are today's seven super tips with his airness, Michael Jordan. Pat Riley, I mean, you and I, we go way back. I still remember in Hawaii. You remember in Hawaii where you and I, I was coming in, you were, I guess, leaving, and you decided to stay a couple extra days, but you were in my suite, and they came and they told you you had to get out of my suite. <laughs> and you slid a note underneath my door, although you had to move, you did move. <laughs> you slid a note saying, I enjoyed the competition, congratulations, but we will meet again. <laughs> and I take the heart in that, because I think in all honesty, you are just competitive as I am, you know, even from a coaching standpoint. And you've challenged me every time I played the Knicks, the Heat, and I, I don't think you were with the Lakers, but any time I played against you, you had, you had Jordan Stoppers on your team, <laughs> you had John Starks, who I loved. You even had my friend Charles Oakley saying, we can't go to lunch, we can't go to dinner because Pat doesn't believe in fraternizing between the two of us. <laughs> and this guy hit me harder than anybody else in the league, and he was my best friend. Patrick Ewing, we had the same agent. We came out the same time, but we couldn't go to lunch. Why is this? You think I'm going to play against Patrick any different than I play against anybody else? No, no. And then you had your little guy who was on your staff who became the Knicks coach after you. Jeff Van Gundy. <laughs> he said, I conned the players, I befriended them, and then I attacked them on the basketball court. <laughs> Where did that come from? I just so happened to be a friendly guy. I get along with everybody, but at the same time, when the light comes on, I'm as competitive as anybody you know. You know, so you guys, I must say thank you very much for giving me that motivation that I desperately needed. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. 
Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. To all the legends, you guys paved the road for all of us. And you will never be disrespected in the way that you guys would never feel not proud about what we have done. Everything that I've done, I pay tribute to you guys. You paved the road for us. You know, and I, I, I'm glad that we were able to find some type of way that we can give that thanks back uh, from the health care to a lot of things that we have tried to do for the legends. I am very happy that Sam Perkins nagged me for about two months to be here to do this. I'm glad that I chose to do this because I haven't had a chance to do this. And it's great to see the, the energy that you guys provide to us and to see the former players and the, and, the, and the opportunities that you guys provided for me. So, Sam, wherever you are, teammate, thanks for nagging me for a long period of time to get me here. And I'm very happy, very happy to be here. I missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Uh, I hope he understands. I hope he understands it, it goes a long way, and he was a very competitive person. I was a very competitive person. He said organization wins championships. I said, I didn't see organization playing with the flu in Utah. I didn't see him playing with, you know, with the bad ankle. Uh, granted, granted, I think organization put together teams, but at the end of the day, the teams got to go out and play. You know, so in essence, I think the players win the championship and the organization have something to do with it, don't get me wrong. But don't try to put the organization above the players because at the end of the day, the players still got to go out there and perform. You guys got to pay us, but I still got to go out and play. As a member of the Chicago Bulls, the last shot. What was that shot? Game oh. six. Utah. The Bulls can win it right here. The Bulls can win it. Unbelievable. 13 seconds left. Jordan left side. I practice as if I'm playing in a game. So when the moment comes in the game, it's not new to me. That's the beauty of the game of basketball. That's the reason why you practice. That's the effort. So when you get to that moment, you don't have to think. Instinctively, things happen. Jordan, a drive. with 45 points. You know, my competitive nature went right into the pros. I get to the Bulls, which I was very proud that at the time Jerry Reinsdorf didn't own the team. Uh, it was another organization and Rob Thorne drafted me. Kevin Lockett was my first coach. Kevin used to take practices and put me in the starting five. And we, you know, he'd make it a, a competitive thing where the losing team have to run. So now we, I'm on the winning team, and halfway in the game, halfway in the situation, he would switch me to the losing team. <laughs> so I, I, I take that as a competitive thing by you trying to test me. And by nine times out of ten, the second team would come back and win no matter what he did. <laughs> so I appreciate Kevin Lockett for giving me that challenge, you know, providing that type of fire within me. He threw another log on that fire for me. That's it for today's seven super tips with Michael Jordan. Again, I hope you're staying safe, smart, and sane. And remember, if you're ever guarding Michael Jordan, make sure you have that gum on the ready. And until next time, remember, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. Working closely with the Equifax team, we will, <clears throat> but you don't wanna miss me getting hosed down by the sprinkler. Cause if I get wet, we don't have that in the can as an outtake, that would be on you, Mr. Driscoll. <laughs> Are we rolling now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>